In order to get some more practice with composition of functions, I want to do another example, but this time we're going to use rational functions. Rational functions do have some restrictions on their domains. The first function, f of x, which is given as 1 over x plus 2, uh, its domain will be all real numbers, x, such that x does not equal negative 2, right? That makes the denominator go to 0. And likewise for the function g, g is 4 over x minus 1. The domain of g is going to be all real numbers x such that x does not equal 1 in this situation. So that's the domain of the two functions. Let's now compose these functions together and see what happens. When you do f of g of x, we're going to put inside of f g of x. And you can evaluate this however you want. Uh, you can do the first one, the inside function first or the second outside function. Uh, f of g of x, this would look like 1 over, we're going to write the formula for f. But instead of seeing x, we're going to write a g of x. So we get 1 over g of x plus 2. But g of x is itself a fraction, so you get 1 over 4 divided by x minus 1 plus 2, like so. And so this is an example of what one often calls, uh, so the textbooks often call this a complex fraction. I'm not a big fan of that term because a complex fraction makes it seem like maybe complex numbers are involved whatsoever, like 1 plus i over 2 minus i or something. Uh, nothing like that. That's a complex fraction. In this context, we have a compounded fraction or maybe a nested fraction where we have fractions inside of fractions. And whenever we have a fraction inside of a fraction, it means it's needlessly complicated and we can simplify this thing. And so when you look at this nested fraction, you're going to see this big fraction bar. That's going to represent the mommy. And then you're going to see these little fraction bars right here, which are going to be the babies. So I want you to identify the least common denominator of all of the baby fractions you see there. And as there's only one baby fraction, the least common denominator is, is its denominator, x minus 1. You're going to multiply the mother fraction by the least common denominator of all the baby fractions. Basically, what we're saying here is that baby needs to grow up and move out of mom's house right here. You're going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. And we're going to distribute this here. You're going to see in the numerator, you're just going to get 1 times x minus 1. Not a whole lot to say there. In the denominator, you're going to get 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. And then you're going to get 2 times x minus 1, like so. The x minus 1 on the first part will cancel, which was the whole point of this. And then if we look at the rest of it, 1 times x minus 1 is just x minus 1. In the denominator, we get a 4, and you get a 2 times x minus 1. In which case, then we can simplify the denominator by distributing that 2, you get 4 plus 2x uh, minus 2. The, the, the 4 and the negative 2 are going to combine together. So we get x minus 1 over 2x plus 2. You can factor out the 2 from the denominator if you want to, but there's not going to be a huge benefit of doing that at this venture right here. But I mean, like I said, you can do it. So the simplified form would be x minus 1 over 2x plus 1. That gives us here the uh, the composite of the two functions when you put a rational function inside of a rational function it itself becomes a rational function but what can we say about the domain of this rational expression we can see when we look at the formula there the domain of f composed with g we get all real numbers x such that x does not equal negative 1. We can see very quickly that negative 1 would make this denominator go to 0, right? And that's maybe no surprise in here. Not negative 1. Oh, I'm not, I mean, it is negative 1. Excuse me. Um, we, we can't let the denominator go to negative 1. But it turns out there's another problem as well. And we've seen this issue before. The question is, is this function x minus 1 over 2 times x plus 1, is this actually equal to the original expression we had right here? Because, yeah, we can't let the denominator of the mother fraction go to zero, but we also can't let the denominator of the baby fraction go to zero. We were able to simplify out the baby fractions, but those domain restrictions have consequences on this formula. F composed with G is not defined when X equals negative one or X equals one. Because the first function, G here, anything that fits inside of F composed with G has to fit inside of G. And 1 does not fit inside of G. So this machine will break if you try to shove 1 into it. But you also have that negative 1 was unallowed. Why was negative 1 not allowed? Well, the thing is, the stuff going inside of G will process and will come out of G. But the things coming out of G have to fit inside of F. F doesn't allow negative 2. And notice, if you take G of negative 1, you get, drum roll, you get a negative 2 right there. 
the negative one is exactly the number which put inside of G will produce a negative two. We didn't actually have to compute that because as we simplify the fraction, we see very naturally that there's a restriction there. So when it comes to finding the domain of these composite rational functions, what I want you to do is look at the final simplified form, see what is unallowed, you see negative one, go back to the original form, see what's not allowed, it's a, it's a positive one, put those things together and that's the domain of the composite, these rational functions. Uh, let's do another example. This time let's do g of f of x, right? So g of x, which you can't see it on the screen anymore, but remember g of x was four over x minus one. We're gonna replace the x with f of x here. And then f of x, again, it's also off the screen, but remember f of x was one over x plus two minus one here. And so in order, in order to calculate the domain, I'm already gonna say it here, the domain of g of f here, it's gonna be all real numbers, x, such that x is not equal to, first of all, we can't allow negative two because that makes this fraction undefined. But if x is not negative two, then we can proceed to the next step, identifying the baby fraction here, we're going to times top and bottom by x plus 2. And so that'll cancel the x plus 2 in the denominator. We end up with 4 times x plus 2 in the numerator. And then we're going to get 1 minus x plus 2 in the denominator. Uh, in which case we get 4 times x plus 2 in the numerator. I'm just going to leave it factored. And then in the denominator, when you distribute this negative sign, you end up with a negative x. And then you're going to get a minus 1 right there assuming we did everything right there. And in which case, since everything in the denominator is negative, I'm just gonna factor out the negative. So we get a negative four times x plus two, and then an x plus one in the denominator. So looking at the final form here, we see that there's another restriction. X cannot equal negative one, like so. Now we're usually pretty good at identifying the negative one in the final form, but we have to also remember the restriction from the original form. That's the most common mistake students make. They forget that we can't go from this part to this part, that these things are not equal if X is negative two. So the, the fact that we go from here to here, we're assuming that X equals, doesn't equal negative two. And why is that? Well, look at this thing right here. What is this quantity? In a previous lecture, when we did something like this, I said that this quantity is one, but that's not exactly true. It depends on X. If X is any number other than negative two, then this is in fact one. But what if X is negative two? Then you get zero divided by zero, which zero divided by zero is not one. It's undefined. Um, because if we allowed zero divided by zero to equal one, then we're allowing division by zero. In fact, all numbers are then equal to zero and we just blew up the universe. Why as well just drop an, a meteor on uh, Cedar City right now if we're going to divide by zero. Let's not do that. So because we don't divide by zero, we do have to require that x doesn't equal negative two. And that's a consequence of the domain right here. You put negative two inside, uh, that is you, you don't allow negative two inside the domain because if you did, you might as well just kiss your family goodbye right now. I, I apologize for the dark metaphor there, but division by zero is just that dark. It, it, it really is, right? One last example, let's do f composed with f here. So f of f of x, we're gonna put f of x inside of f of x. Uh, remember f of x was given by the formula one over x plus two. And so we're gonna replace x with f of x, which itself is one over x plus two, plus two. So we can already see that with the domain of f of f, oops, f of f, we get all numbers x such that x is not equal to the following. With rational functions, it's just easier to list what's not in the domain. We can't have negative two because that's not inside the domain of f. And so then we're gonna times the numerator by x plus two and the denominator by x plus two to get rid of this x plus two. Uh, upon doing so, the numerator will then become x plus two, one times x plus two. And the denominator, we're gonna get one plus two times x plus two. Multiplying out the denominator here, we get one plus two x plus four, x plus two on the bottom. And so then you get a two x plus five in the denominator, right? And the numerator left unaffected, x plus two. And so what makes the denominator go to zero here? We're gonna take two x plus five equals zero. If you're not sure, I mean, you don't have to do it in your head. I mean, if you can, that's great, but if not, no big deal, just write it out. Subtract five from both sides, you get two x equals negative five, divide by two x would equal negative five over two. That makes 
excuse me, that makes the denominator go to zero. So negative five halves is forbidden from the domain. And that gives us the domain of the composite of these two functions and gives us more practice on how to compute the composite of two rational functions here.